Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, I'm really pleased to participate in this ninth edition of the International Conference on Renewable and Sustainable Energies. Special thanks to the organizers, MSTI, Mazen, Mohammed V, and Abdel Malik Saadi Universities, and the other national international organizations as well. The event is really, really timely. It's a great opportunity to highlight our actions, particularly those related to SDG 7, to ensure affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern access to energy services. The event is also very timely. It, it comes just after COP26, where Morocco revised upwards its commitments in terms of greenhouse gas emissions reductions in a context of economic recovery with more than 300 post-COVID recovery measures. But let me get back to the Paris Agreement. Achieving the goals of Paris means rapid and profound transitions in energy industry ecosystems, urban infrastructure, and all these at the same time. It cannot be done without real technology breakthrough, particularly in the area of energy storage, especially if you want to increase renewable energy to more than 70% of electricity production with almost zero coal by 2050. Solar PV modules and battery storage costs decreased by almost 90% and 87% respectively during the last decade. This was also only possible through R&D, through demonstration and deployment at scale, in addition to supportive regulations and international cooperation in trade. That's on the supply side. But the good news is demand-side management technologies usually facilitate the deployment of low-carbon options on the supply side. Morocco's commitment to energy transition is a voluntarist political choice made by His Majesty the King Mohammed VI, God assist him, more than a decade ago, through an ambitious energy strategy. This energy strategy is, is based on three key pillars, as you know. One, renewable energies. Two, energy efficiency. And number three, regional integration. This strategy is supported by openness to the private sector and an industrial integration. One key priority is really to improve and streamline the regulatory and institutional framework to be in phase with the rapid evolution of the energy sector and to increase our attractiveness to private investments, both national and international. Accelerating a national ecosystem of renewable energy technologies will not be possible without strengthening transparency, particularly on transaction and system costs without access to information on, on, on investment opportunities and without facilitating decentralized production as much as possible. Morocco decided to exceed the objective announced at COP21 by increasing the share of renewable energies to more than 52% in the electricity mix by 2030. We have 50 renewable projects today with a total installed capacity of around 4 gigawatts that are already in operation. We have more than 40 international companies from 13 countries that are active in the renewable power generation market. Since 2009, that's more than $12 billion invested in renewable energy. These projects have contributed to improve our energy independence by more than 8% since 2009. For the 60 other projects that are being developed or under construction, and the multiple others which will be financed over the next decade, my message is the return on the capital employed needs to improve. Again, through strengthening transparency, improving access to information on investment opportunities, but also through improving our integrated development approach. In line with the new development model, we want to maximize the impact on employment, to maximize the impact on education, on health, agriculture, and infrastructures to guarantee a sustainable development for the kingdom. In line with the, new, with the new development model, new initiatives are being launched to accelerate our energy transition and sustainable development. For example, Morocco just adopted a roadmap for the development of low carbon hydrogen. It has significant assets to become a key player due to its energy and logistics infrastructure and its industrial and R&D ecosystems. This roadmap targets industry, ammonia, mobility, and energy storage in the local market and for exports. Morocco also adopted a roadmap for energy recovery from biomass, targeting household, agriculture, and forestry waste, as well as wastewater. 
The energy potential is estimated at more than 20 terawatt hours per year. That's around half of our national electricity production today or the consumption of a country like Azerbaijan. Morocco, with its 3,500 kilometers of sea coast, has a huge offshore wind potential that exceeds 250 gigawatts, in addition to the energy of marine currents. The country also adopted an integrated program mandating all water desalination plants to be equipped with renewable energy production units. The first integrated project is authorized this year. And also we have all industrial zones with, will have access to renewable energy with a total estimated electricity demand of more than 800 gigawatt hours per year. The midway review of our energy, energy strategy also focuses on the promotion of energy efficiency in energy intensive sectors and transport, as well as agriculture and public lighting. We are targeting an energy saving potential of at least 20% by 2030. With more renewables, more decentralized production, more efficiency, smart grids are now unavoidable and they have to be included in our transmission and distribution investment plans. They help improve the quality of electricity supply and they help improve the quality of targeted services. Obviously, research, development, innovation and industrializations are essential pillars. Let me give you some numbers illustrating the expansion of R&D structures and platforms and their synergy with national and international companies, as well as our in universities ecosystem. The Green Energy Park and the Green and Small Smart Building Parks, two innovative platforms with 20 to 25 million dollars each, uh, dedicated to research and development and training in renewables, green buildings, energy efficiency and smart grids. We also have other platforms that are being developed related to green hydrogen, to agro-energy, focusing on biomass and energy agriculture nexus, or the water energy nexus focused on desalination and water treatment, and they're all uh, endowed by $50 million. In terms of industrial integration, a wind turbine blade plant with an annual capacity of 1,000 megawatt, as well as three PV module plants with 300 megawatt per year, have been set up for the local market and for exports. A thorough watching of evolving te technologies as well as win-win national and international partnerships are necessary for successful energy transition. Morocco is an active member of all alliances and coalitions aimed at energy transition. And in this regard, I would like to cite in particular the Coalition for Sustainable Access to Energy that is co-chaired by the Kingdom of Morocco and Ethiopia to generalize access to sustainable energy, particularly in Africa. Morocco has developed an important arsenal of strategic cooperation agreements in this regard. So win-win partnerships are necessary, but they are not sufficient. They should constantly be accompanied by capacity building, by technology transfer, but also by access to the growing carbon market and ESG-related funding mechanisms and opportunities. So to conclude, I would like to underline the importance of innovation and digitalization to bring in real investment opportunities. We are on the verge of potential technology breakthroughs, particularly in the area of energy storage, which we are watching carefully. Your discussions and the intellectual property you will exchange over the next four days, particularly on electrochemical storage, on lithium ion batteries, on vanadium redox flow technologies, might totally change trade balances and international cooperation down the road. They might totally change the way we plan, the way we build, and the way we finance our energy systems. That's why I'm particularly proud of the innovative space that this ninth edition of the International Conference on Renewable and Sustainable Energies offer, and I wish you all success. Thank you very much.